Hello everyone, this is intended to be a short video to remind you how to observe with the CCD camera on the 16 inch telescope. Um, I'm going to assume that you've watched the how to observe with the 16 inch telescope videos, um, so I'll refer to things in those videos. Um, the CCD is, is a new uh, instrument that we uh, got in J January 2020. Um, it was purchased from Finger Lakes Instrumentation for around $12,000. Um, so this is something that we ask you to be uh, very careful with. Um, make sure to carefully cover it when you're done with it so that it doesn't get wet um, and, and basically look after it. Um, it has 1496 by 1496 pixels, so it's a very nice uh, CCD chip. Um, it gives a 30 arc minute by 30 arc minute field of view on the telescope. Um, and we're going to leave it permanently mounted this semester. Um, it's a bit of a process to swap it for the eyepiece, so we're not going to ask you to do that. Um, and so you won't have to do a number of the things um, that the 16-inch uh, the video talk about. You won't have to um, uncover the port and connect the gym and, and mount the CCD or the eyepiece or any of that stuff. This is going to be permanently mounted. However, um, uh, yes, yeah, so before we get into any more details, here are some images that we've already taken with this CCD. Um, the top three here show the full field of view of the CCD. So you can see you can fit the whole moon in it, which is very nice. Um, there's the ring nebula. Um, using some of the filters that we have in the filter wheel. Um, the Orion Nebula that you see there is actually the first light image. That's a very quick um, image that Paul took. Again, showing off some of the filters. Um, and then below, I've, I'm demonstrating um, a little bit what you can do with some planetary imaging. So that's Saturn and Jupiter. Those are not the full field of view. Those are cutouts, but also showing different filters. Okay, so once you've uncovered the telescope, um, after you open the dome, of course, um, and uncovered the CCD, you are going to need to connect it both to power um, and to the computer in the control room. So if you look around the back of the CCD, and this that's what this image shows, um, you'll see there's a spot for the power cable and the USB cable. Um, power cable, like with the telescope, please plug it into the CCD first and then into the outlet on the ground. Um, for the USB cable, you're going to need to identify the port in the control room. Um, and feed the USB cable um, from the control, control room through that little hole uh, which comes out near the floor of the telescope platform. So if you haven't done that before, um, you can spot it um, just down uh, near the floor on the platform. Okay, so what do we do next? Um, well, so the first thing you want to do, um, the minute you turn on the camera, in fact, maybe slightly before it, is to make sure that you've um, got the software that controls it um, running on your account on the computer in the in the control room. It should be installed, but if it's not, I hope you make sure it's installed. We need this FLI software as well as SAO image. Um, the first thing to do is to open up the FLI grab, which is the, sort of the main control of the camera. It should connect automatically to the camera if you've connected the USB cord. Um, and you need to set the cooler temperature, as you see it here, set cooler temperature. Um, and you need to have the set point be above the dew point um, for the, the current conditions. Um, the dew point is the temperature at which condensation will form on surfaces. We do not want condensation to form on our CCD. So we want to make sure that that set point, the temperature that the CCD is cooled to, is as low as possible to um, get as, as good of an image as possible, but make sure that it's above the dew point. Okay, how do you look up the dew point? Uh, well, most uh, weather forecasting things will have it in it. So here's a couple of examples where you can see it on my phone in the Weather Channel app. Um, also, I like weatherunderground.com, um, which uh, gives the dew point somewhere on the website. Search for it. Um, the camera accepts temperatures in Celsius. So if you look up this and you find it in Fahrenheit, you're going to need to convert it to degrees Celsius because um, the camera takes those. Okay. So now um, your camera is running, um, your software is up, um, and the telescope is pointing at something. Um, we're going to do the same pointing um, procedure as we do for the eyepiece observing. So you want to point the telescope at something really bright and obvious to find. A nice bright star or um, Jupiter and Saturn are both good options. Um, um, and then align the telescope, tell it where it's pointing. Um, for fine alignment, um, you're going to need to take an image. Um, you can't look through the, the main eyepiece. So you need to go into FLI grab and use the grab control um, to do a real short exposure, short, short exposures on bright objects. Um, so here you can see I've done that and I've got a little star here in the finder. It's not quite centered, 
um, I've put the directions that you'd move the telescope, move it just a little bit to, to center the object right into the center of the field of view of the CCD, um, and then align the telescope again. The finder right now is pretty well aligned with the CCD. So if you can, if you put something near the crosshairs in the finder, it should be in the CCD. If you knock that finder scope, the small telescope along the side, um, it's gonna get out of alignment. We can realign it, but it's gonna be a bit of a process. So try not to knock it. Um, yeah, so you've taken your image and you've adjusted your pointing. You now want to do focusing. Um, and so here, are some examples of an out of focus star, both in the FLI Grab and then this SAO image um, software. I don't find it very easy to tell if a star is in focus or not in FLI Grab. Um, so I like to open up the images in SAO in the DS9, in SAO image DS9, and then you can zoom right in and you can see that this is like a little mini donut. Um, so we need to do the focus procedure. Um, we have a FLI focus, which will actually control find focus. Um, so if you set it to about 10,000 points different from where you start and then take a series of images, you can see if those images are getting more in focus or less in focus and proceed um, as, as appropriate. You want to move it so that the stars are in focus, obviously. Now, let's see, did I have more on focusing? Yes, I did. Here is a zoom in on a not in focus star. So it looks a bit like a donut. And then our in focus star which turned out to be at uh, 60,000 uh, on the focus scale point. If you hit the edge at the end of this, this electronic focus, um, so you go down to zero or you go up to the maximum, I'm mean, gonna actually have to move the course focus on the telescope, so turn the knob on the back of the main uh, telescope. Um, just make sure you remember which way you turn it in case you go the wrong way. Um, and, but otherwise it should roughly be in focus um, as long as the temperature, you know, wh while the temperature stays quite stable. But if there's a big change in temperature, we may need to, to move that course focus. Okay, so now we know where we're pointing. Um, you're gonna basically tell the telescope to point to a bright star near the object, your target of interest, um, and then recalibrate it if it's a big uh, move across the sky. You want to recalibrate on that bright thing near your target of interest and then you can tell it just to point at your target of interest and it and it should be pretty well aligned. I've had good luck with that this summer. Um, you may want to take images through different filters and to do that we use the FLI filter software. Um, this labels things as different slots. There's a filter wheel, there's a physical wheel that has these different filters in them. Um, and we've put on the control room computer, we've put a little guide to which filter is in which slot. Um, if you need to, res it doesn't always know where it's pointing initially, the filter wheel. So you may need to reset it before you start. Um, and just bear in mind, this is a physical wheel that is moving. So it's not, it's not like a computer game. It can take a little bit of time to move. So um, give it a bit of time. Um, then take your images. Uh, in the different filters, make sure to save them. Um, I recommend putting them in a Google Drive um, at the end of the night while you're shutting down um, and then you'll have access to it um, to, to do your data reduction offline. Okay, so that's finally, that's it. I wish you clear skies and make sure to shut down safely following this normal shutdown procedure, but also making sure to put that extra cover on the CCD. Okay.